Hello, 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 everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Whenever you are up and going and here to learn, welcome to uh, English for Academic Purposes uh, Smart Live class. I'm your teacher, Joshua Porter. I'm the director here at Spokane College of English Language in beautiful Spokane, Washington. It's starting to become spring here. The snow is melting. Uh, we're getting a little bit of rain, so the flowers and grass are springing up out of the ground. It's really pretty. Um, how's everybody doing today? I've seen some dialogue going on in the chat. You guys were talking about and guessing what the subject of today's class was going to be. We have Vivek, we have Gola. Hello. Uh, is this your first time? Uh, that's the first time I've seen your name in the chat, so welcome. Uh, we have Sweet Hamadi. Uh, we have French Leo, Jose is here, of course. Um, Jimmy Fallis, hello, how are you? Um, Misurati, Misurati, is that how I say your name? Hello. Ella, hi Ella, how are you? Um, great to see you. We have um, someone named Miss Kazak, 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 hello English lovers. Yes, we all love English here. That's why we're here. This class, and I don't want to miss anybody. There's a lot of people here in the chat, though. That's great. That's wonderful. We have Omar. We have Donna. Um, you guys are wonderful. Great, great group of students. Steve's back. Hey, Steve. How are you doing? Um, a lot of you are talking about who knows language. That's wonderful. You guys said hello to me. Thank you. Lazaro. Hello, Lazaro. Um, or Lazaro. Lazaro, Lazaro, let me know. Uh, also, Wagdi, that's a cool name. That's the first time I've seen that name. Wagdi, hello. Um, all right, so everybody's saying hi. That's great. You guys were asking about what the topic was for today. Oh. Well, let me tell you. Uh, today, we are going to go over analytics, okay? And I, I phrased this class um, as academic writing analysis. That's the series of these next three classes. We're gonna have three, count them, three classes on analytics. Um, but I really want to emphasize that we cannot truly learn writing without learn, learning reading, and we cannot truly learn reading without learning writing. Those two things are inextricably connected forever, uh, just like speech and uh, like speaking and listening are connected, right? Um, now they can exist independently, of course, but there's always a nuance there. Uh, if someone is deaf, um, they will have to learn how to read lips and body language. There's a whole bunch of uh, components that go together to create fluency. But reading, writing, listening, and speaking, those are the four main categories that produce communication. And reading and writing are very closely connected, and listening and speaking are very closely connected. We kind of combined all four of those aspects in our presentation series, which went really well. Thank you so much. You guys did great. Um, props to all our premium subscribers who did a wonderful job of sending in their homework and getting corrections on their presentations. You guys are wonderful. If you want to know how to become a premium subscriber yourself, let me bam, buzz over to the lesson here. And I will show you. So if you go to smartenglish.com slash live slash live, you will go to this page. I will put it in the chat for you. Um, Deepak is here. Hello. How are you? Uh, <laughs> Don, are you from Australia or are you living in Australia? Um, you have the Australian g'day. G'day, mate. I'm a terrible... Uh, Austra I have a terrible Australian accent. I can't do accents very well, but I, I think they're fun and I try again and again. So there is smartenglish.com slash live slash live in the chat. I will also put in our class notes here. I've already started to um, write down a few things that we definitely want to remember. But here it is. I'm gonna make this big for you. We'll go full screen. So that's where you want to Go, right there. Um, if you want to study English with a live teacher in real life, go to usa-english.com slash en slash application. 
and you can apply to go to our college. Or if you have questions, you can email our awesome um, team here at study at usa-english.com. Um, that is a great email, great resource. You can reach me there and our whole team um, if you have questions about studying in the United States. It's a great place to learn English in the Northwest, the Pacific Northwest, where I live. My accent, if you like my accent, because everybody has an accent. Um, we are known for having the most neutral American accent out there. So this is the best place to learn English because you can then travel anywhere in the US and people will understand you easily. Um, and you should be able to understand them easily as well because you're learning a just a flat, um, medium, generic English, American English accent. So we have the most neutral in the country. Um, that being said, I will jump into the lesson. So that's how to join. That's where we're at. Oh, and I should say, if you guys haven't, if, you, if you've been here a long time and you haven't checked out the new um, USA English website, you should definitely check it out. Once again, I'll post it in the chat. But this is super cool. You can do a fee calculator um, under admissions here, and that can tell you exactly how much money you need if you want to come study here in the US. Uh, you can learn a little bit about our student life activities, uh, explore our courses. There's tons. It's awesome. And uh, you can check out our campus, learn about Spokane, and learn about our team. So definitely check that out if you get a chance. You can also learn about our university partners um, somewhere they're on here. Ah, our University Pathways, Flathead Valley Community College, beautiful college. Uh, Eastern Arizona State, Northern Arizona, Montana State, uh, North Idaho, City University, um, Central Washington. We partner with tons of great American universities. So, and here's some of our lessons. What lesson we're going to look at today is, uh, of course, in our English 140, English for Academic Purposes. This class will prepare you for university, uh, focus on writing, reading skills, listening skills, presentation skills. Um, and before we jump into that, I'm gonna go ahead and take attendance for our premium subscribers who are all here. Um, school trips to Canada, sometimes, yeah. We, uh, it depends on your visa. Our Korean students can go to Canada, no problem. Uh, if you come from other countries, you have to get a special uh, visitor visa to travel up and tour to Canada, but we're right near the border. So you can experience the USA and Canada together. And we do partner packages with our sister school in Vancouver. So a lot of students will come here and study for like six months or a year, and then, um, or even sometimes like three months, and then go up to Canada and study for three months or six months or a year. So you can do both. You can do a North American tour and just travel up uh, from the USA to Canada. Be cool. Mm. Other questions, uh, Arabic name says, hi everybody. I can't read Arabic, I'm sorry, I can speak a little and understand a little, but I can't read it. Um, Donna says, would love to travel and get off the prisoner island. Donna, what's your prisoner island? Islands can be beautiful. Um, let me know where you are. Uh, French Leo, Arabic style, yes, okay. Uh, other question, Deepak says, if I'm doing tense correction, and we have an example sentence here, by July 2020, she blank in this firm for 10 years. Um, okay, so we will address questions like that if we have time at the end of class. Great that you're exploring English and that you want that um, question answered. Another great site that we, uh, I'm a host of, I'm one of the admin for, and so is Sean, and so is Nicole, and so is Neil. Um, is the Facebook account. I totally forgot to share my Facebook, which I wanna be all of your friends. We can be Facebook friends, that's cool. You can learn a little bit more about my life and what life is like up here in Spokane, Washington. I'll share it in the chat. I will also put it in our notes. Um, so you can add me or you know, you could befriend our college, which is super cool. Give us an awesome review, something like that. Um, here's our college website as well. 
man, there's so many great resources for you guys. Um, I'll put this in the notes. And then there's one more Facebook page I want you guys to check out. I think many of you know about it already, but just in case you don't, Learn English on Facebook is um, a page that is wonderful for those kinds of questions, Deepak. Um, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna check this out. Uh, there's great dialogue that goes on. Um, I think we have like I don't know how many members we have. A lot. Twenty one thousand uh, seven hundred forty one members. A lot of these people are my friends. This native English speaker here. Kristen's a great musician. She's a native English speaker. Um, a lot of these people live in Spokane, actually. But um, there, there's Americans on this page. There's also international students, and everybody kind of like talks about English and learns. So it's great. Um, definitely check this out. And Deepak, I'd say just go ahead and uh, ah, thanks, Omar. SCL and CCL. They are just as great. They're both amazing colleges. I love CCEL. I go up there, I work there sometimes. Um, the, those teachers come and work here sometimes. Adam's a teacher, he's worked at both locations. Um, we love both colleges. They're amazing colleges. They both have the smart curricula. Uh, the classrooms look the same. The teachers are equally amazing and talented. So definitely check them both out. Anyway, okay, enough about all the great resources. If you guys want more information about it, you can email me. Um, you can also email Zach at um, smartenglish.com if you want to sign up to become a premium subscriber because that's going to become important with today and the homework and all that. Khalid, it's your first time. This is your first time here. Everybody welcome Khalid. Say hello to Khalid and say what's up. Welcome to uh, Learn English on Smart Live with Josh Porter. Uh, English for academic purposes. Great to have new students. Love that. Thanks for being here. Uh, Mohammed's new too. Say hi to Mohammed, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, we will get started here. All right. So here is what the topic of conversation is going to be today. Analytical writing. Um, so again, I talked about this um, class being academic writing, analysis writing, but we also have to understand that analysis comes from somewhere. So what is analysis? I'm going to ask the chat. I'm just going to say, hey, what is analysis? That's the question. That's what we're going to talk about. Um, so here is our question for now. What is Analysis. What does this word mean? This word right here. What does it mean? Who can tell me what analysis means? I'd like you to define it. In fact, I'd like you to define it so much that I'm going to leave this question up here. I'm going to go off screen, play some music for a minute, and I want to see if we can get an answer from everybody in the chat. And I might, I'm going to copy the answers here, and then we're going to talk about them in just a minute, okay? So go ahead and uh, answer this question, just define it as best you can. What is analysis? What does that mean to you? And we'll be right back, okay? Thank you. 
Thank you, Vivek. Sorry. Okay. What I was saying there when my mic was muted, appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Uh, is that there are so many great answers that we, um, I, I can't paste them all in there. So thank you for answering. It's great that you guys are participating. And uh, thank you, everybody, for letting me know the mic was off. I really appreciate that. I usually don't, I haven't turned the mic off in a while, so um, we haven't used music and I gotta get back in the habit. So thank you for pointing that out. But um, there are a ton of great answers here and I'm gonna talk about all of them. Um, but I just wanna get some here on the page. So let's talk about this. What is analysis? Um, these are the answers from the chat so everybody can see if you're watching the video later. Um, analysis is to look into details uh, of the subject. I'm not going to correct all the grammar for all of these. There are some grammatical um, areas of improvement. But I'm not going to worry about that. We're, we're talking big picture concept here. So it's okay if we make mistakes in the chat. Don't worry about it. Um, so analysis is to look into the details of the subject. Yes and no. Analysis is taking information that we find and um, processing that information, thinking about it, and then digesting it and sort of giving our opinion or our idea. So synthesis, one student said. Synthesis is when you take multiple sources and you synthesize that information into a, an opinion or a, a thought on a topic. So that's, it's definitely part of it. When we talked about our academic writing and getting different sources and making sure our sources are credible, um, that they are from reliable, um, our sources come reliably, that um, they are bits of information we can trust, we would get multiple sources um, and use that information as evidence to support our analysis. We synthesize and then whatever results from that synthesis is the analysis. So another student wrote, analysis is writing reflectively about a topic or subject. Yes, I like that a lot. Writing reflectively. We reflect back on the information we read. So here's the process simplified in uh, giant expressive terms. So learn, hmm, learn, think, and then form an opinion. Right? So we, we learn, we do some reading, we read material, and then we think about it, we process it, we synthesize that information, and then we form our analysis. Um, another student talked about uh, blood. So analysis of blood, which is your group, A, A positive, et cetera. Um, uh, exactly, you, you get information, you find that information, and that is the analysis. So that's a very medical term or technical term where we are analyzing information. So the information is the blood, right? Um, and then we process that information. When we're talking about blood, it's actually a machine. We process the, the blood. We break it down. We examine it. We look at it through a microscope. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with blood. If you're a phlebotomist, you, you learn all these different techniques and stuff. But you get the blood, the blood is the information. The synthesis, um, or excuse me, the, the, um, the processing is like if we were reading a book, right? 
So if we're comparing the two things, blood is like a book, and by reading it, you are analyzing the blood. Um, and then when you come to the end of the book, you realize the blood type, right? Um, you form, uh, or you reach a conclusion. And then you usually form an opinion about that. In some cultures, blood typing is used in the way um, horoscopes are used here in the United States. What's your sign? What's your blood type? Um, that's one analogy we could make. It's, it's kind of a convoluted one, but it's fun. Um, so reflectively, I like that a lot. To get more information, to think about the information. To really think about it and dig deeper. A lot of you said dig deeper, discover, uh, that's very good. Miriam says analysis is to make sure that you examine something in detail, how, why, and what all at once. You do a bit of investigation. Yeah, you Sherlock Holmes that stuff. You Sherlock it. I'm gonna use it as a verb. Uh, as I took creative writing, I can use it as a verb. Um, you investigate, we all become little detectives and we examine the information, and then we form conclusions. Two different detectives might form two different conclusions or theories, um, and that's really what we're doing. It's a thing that happens when you break something into details. You're examining the details. Yep, that's part of it. Analysis is like examining, finding, looking at details, guess or give ideas about something or someone. To guess or give ideas, um, yeah, that's sort of like forming a hypothesis. Um, sum up information. That comes before analysis. So to sum up information is to summarize. And this comes before the actual details. Uh, it's looking closely and digging out buried information. Buried information, I like that idea. Um, there's information uh, in formation, I-N. Buried information is kind of like subtext. Have you guys heard the term subtext? Subtext is like a hidden meaning um, or a second meaning in a text. And I inverted my E and C there. Second meaning or a hidden meaning within the text. So there's a subtext there. There's extra information. Uh, we use it also for spoken language. But um, you guys have the right idea. So I'm gonna simplify these definitions for us, okay? What is analysis? Analysis is to take in inf existing information, such as from multiple reliable sources, I'm gonna say academic sources, Oops. Multiple reliable academic sources. Think about that information, which is processing, and to form a theory or opinion based on that information. Okay? So that's, it's a pretty lengthy definition, but it includes all the important parts, I believe, of analysis. Analysis is to take existing information. So something that's already there. Could be a video, could be a speech, it could be um, you know, a novel, it could be uh, a, an academic paper, right? Just yesterday, I read in Business Insider that there is a star um, that is circling a black hole in space and it is traveling at 1% the speed of light. That's like 4 million miles in, I, I don't know, 30 minutes? I can't remember exactly the figures. Fast, super fast. Um, and it's amazing, it blows my mind, it's incredible. Um, so I have, I have choices when I, I read something like that. I can read something like that and just accept it. I can read something like that and seek out further information. Um, and then I can either use that information to um, 
disregard it or to to accept it. Um, this is what happens in the scientific community. So this is new information in the scientific world, and it will be looked at by other scientists in, in countries all over the world. We all care about um, science and space and exploration. These are things that are ubiquitous to all of humanity. We all want to know more, right? So this is how the scientific process works. And it's no different in good analytical writing. You take information from credible sources, reliable academic sources. We want to make sure where we're getting our information um, is a reliable source because if we base things on inaccurate information or wrong information, everything afterwards is going to be wrong as well. So your, your sources are important. Multiple reliable academic sources. This is the, the best way I can define it. Um, it's good to get information from many places, you know, and it's good to get information from many places, or you must get information from many places that are academic in nature, that are reliable, um, that are not based in bias or anything like that. It's not funded by some company with an agenda. Um, seek academic information. Okay, uh, Walid is a little bit late. That's okay. Welcome, Walid. We're happy to have you. Intellects are always late, Muhammad says. I like that. I'm going to use that. Thank you, sir. Next time I'm late to something, I'll say, hey, sorry, intellects are always late. Uh, Vivek, did you not know? Oh, come on. Come on, Vivek. Be nice. You always go to some some mean or violent comment. Come on, peace. Be nice, man. Um, let's see. Writing reflectively about a topic is good for you. Yes, yes, yes. Systematic examination and evaluation of data of inf or information by breaking it into its component parts to uncover their interrelationships. Vanilla. That is a very thorough definition. Um, I want to kind of simplify this for... Uh, our class as well because we're at, we're all at different levels of learning so analysis has sort of three steps one take in new information two um, combine with um, well, actually take in new information um, slash uh, add new information to existing information, right? Oh, I'm making it complex. Let's let's keep it simple. Let's take in new information. Two, think about it. Three, um, form an opinion. Form an opinion. Now, opinion is a tricky word in English because a lot of people will tell you, oh, it's, you know, it's just an opinion. Opinions don't mean much. I can, I can have an opinion that uh, the moon is made of cheese, and I can. But someone else can have an opinion that a moon is, the moon is not made of cheese, that it is made of you know, rock and dust that formed millions of years ago um, in space, like all of our planetary bodies. Um, that's an opinion too. One of those opinions is backed up by science. The other opinion is backed up by a dream I had where I was on the moon and it was made of cheese. Um, so opinion is not a word to be taken lightly uh, or, or thrown away like, oh, Josh is crazy. He thinks the moon's made of cheese. Um, because I could also have an opinion that's very scientifically based. And that's, that's super important to consider. Um, so forming an opinion based on this information and our processing of it. We're synthesizing all of this different data into an opinion that we can write about and, and feel strongly about, backed up by evidence. So that's very helpful. Uh, Miriam says, if I found a hidden idea, so Miriam's talking about subtext, the word that we talked about earlier. I'll put that up here. Um, Subtext we defined as a secondary meaning um, within a text, not necessarily 
uh, not necessarily um, obvious um, at first. Not necessarily obvious at first. It usually is, but not necessarily. So if I found a hidden idea, it does not mean I give a person who wrote the article credit on an idea which he never thought about. So Miriam, I don't think you're talking about a hidden idea. I think you're talking about your own analysis. So you understand something different from a reading than perhaps the writer intended. Um, that is okay as long as it's backed up in fact. We can have a one-on-one -on -one Skype if, um, well, our premium subscribers, I can one-on-one -on -one, uh, hang out with you or Skype with you after class and we could talk about that, which we will do in a class coming up. But um, a, a subtext is actually intended by the writer. A secondary meaning within a text intended by the writer. Okay, so that is what subtext is. Miriam, what I think you're talking about is analysis. It's you forming an opinion based on something that you've read. Steve went ahead and uh, wrote those in the chat. Thank you, Steve. Take in new information, think about it, and form an opinion. I appreciate that. Thanks, Steve. That's helpful. Uh, French Leo says the moon is only empty space, space between atoms. Love that science there, uh, Leo. Thank you, sir. I'm a big science fan. And science is an easy um, uh, realm to talk about analysis because it's used throughout science. Um, Gola, I do remember that song, The Cow Jumped Over the Moon. Uh, Vivek says, hello from the moon. I forgot, yeah, Vivek lives on the moon. That is where he is actually watching our class from. Uh, so everybody say hi, and when you go out, Side tonight, if you can see the moon in the sky, give Vivek a wave. Be like, hi, Vivek, good to see you. Um, all right, so we're gonna move forward with this. We're talking about analysis. Um, and I want to talk about how much of your essay should be um, research and how much should be analysis. So here's something to think about. This step one, new information. We have to think about this, right? Um, there's important parts about new information that we need to consider. Um, so one, or A, I guess, here in this system. So with new information, A, we have to think about uh, reliable sources only. Now, this can differ based upon uh, your type of, of writing. Maybe you're doing an ana analysis of um, contemporary music and your sources are um, music videos. You want to stick to, to a, a theme or a domain or a realm of writing where you want to choose your uh, containment of sources. So is this something like climate change where you want to, to refer to scientists worldwide and find out what the consensus is? Or um, is this something like hip-hop in Algeria and you want to talk about hip-hop music but specific to the country of Algeria? Then you're not going to pull sources from other countries and stuff. You're just going to pull sources from that um, artistic scene. Um, I cannot put the link to the lessons in the chat um, because the lessons are, you're not going to be able to um, access them unless you're a premium subscriber, but you can become a premium subscriber. Um, I'll type it in here one more time, smartenglish.com slash live slash live, uh, and that will give you access. Otherwise, it's just going to say you're not registered but happy to do that. So Waleed, go ahead and sign up. You could become a student. It's free for the first month, so just sign up and, and then we can uh, chat about it and I can give you detailed feedback. So Vivek says evaluating. Yeah, that's another good word. It's a synonym for analysis in a way. Um, we evaluate what we learn. So reliable sources only, new information. Um, we also want to consider that we are probably using um, uh, citation and 
So this is, comes in the form of quotation. So we're, we're summarizing and paraphrasing. And remember, I'm going to define these words for us too up here in our little word bank. So we have subtext. Um, we'll call this definitions. We have subtext, we have paraphrasing and summarizing. We talked about this before in an earlier class, but I think it's really important to know the difference between the two. Summarizing is um, condensing the information into a smaller space. Paraphrasing, so you're saying the same thing with less space. Um, paraphrasing is um, changing the vocabulary, sometimes the grammar, um, but keeping, retaining meaning. So you, you could probably guess from these definitions that when you're paraphrasing, you might not be shortening anything. It might be the same length. Uh, so one sentence becomes one sentence that looks different, but has the same meaning, retains the same meaning. Uh, summarizing is condensing information. So one sentence might become one or two words in a summary. Um, essence of the patch, passage. Good job, Nitesh. That's totally right. Essence of the pas passage is summarizing. Um, I like that. That's a nice, concise definition. Good job. Write in your own words. Ah, Nitesh gave us two great, two great uh, ways to define summarizing and paraphrasing. So summarizing is the essence of the passage. Paraphrasing is writing in your own words. I agree. Okay. Uh, let's see. Z versus Z. Sorry you're late. That's okay. No, no problem. Uh, we're happy to have you. Glad you're here. Mm. Okay, so the new information part. We want to make sure we get reliable sources only. Um, and again, like I said, that'll change. If we're talking about a book, it's only one source. You don't have to get multiple sources. And that's going to be the homework for tonight. We're going to, um, we're going to look at an American uh, fiction piece and we're going to talk about it. We're going to um, take in that information, we're going to think about it, and we're going to form an opinion. So, um, new information, uh, reliable sources and citation. Two, when we think about it, we really want to give it time. Um, digest the information. Think about that information and really digest it, really process it. Sometimes take a break away from the reading and then, you know, just have a cup of coffee. Go, go have a tea and uh, sit out in the sunshine for a little bit if it's warm. But really process that information. That will help. Don't try to rush something, especially with writing. You need time. So if you're in academics already, if you're at university, um, make sure you manage your time well. Time management is key if you're going to succeed in academics. Um, okay. Citation means, which is spoken or written from researcher. Uh, not exactly, from research. So spoken or written information that's not your own, you have to cite. Those are other people's words. So that's another way to think about um, citation. They're other people's words. Um, because words can be spoken or written, right? So give it time. Think about the information. Sometimes part of this process is um, so when we think about it, um, we want to give it time. We also want to, um, sorry. So we want to give it time, we want to think about it. We also want to uh, find other sources if we need to. Here's an example. If I am writing a paper on, let's use climate change, 
and I read a bunch of research and I'm thinking about it and I'm pretty sure I have my opinion. Um, I, I kind of know how I'm thinking. It's important to take a little break, like I said, get a coffee or tea, and then come back to that opinion later and say, you know what? Actually, I remember this one aspect of this one paper and I want to learn a little bit more about that. The polar ice caps melting. I want to learn a little bit more detail about that. I know they are um, receding. I know that glaciers are receding and we're losing ice um, at our poles, but that's all I know. I only know that they are going away. I don't know how quickly. I don't know, um, you know, where exactly in the world this will affect people. Um, I want to know more about this. So part of thinking about it is sometimes going back to the new information and digging deeper, finding more uh, research. Uh, another example would be if I read a book and I think about it, I already read the book, I'm finished, and I'm like, you know what? I don't remember exactly what happened in this one chapter. Um, and I feel like that's important for the book. So I go back to that chapter, I reread the information to help me better process it. It's difficult to take in a lot of information in a short time, so make sure you find additional sources if needed or return to your sources to refresh your um, thinking. Okay, that's important. Lastly, um, we are gonna go over uh, let me just do this. Okay. Um, the, the final aspect, form an opinion. Okay, form an opinion. So when you form an opinion, try to use uh, concise and accurate information. I say this probably every class, but economy of language, right? Be economical with your language. Language is a great resource, like water or wood or oil or water is the most important resource in my opinion, but use it sparingly. Make your language accurate and concise. Um, that's important. And make sure you are basing opinions on facts, okay? Facts, reliable facts. Not the moon is cheese, but real facts, right? So those are important things to consider. All right, Gola, good day, have a good day. Um, some of you have to go, I know some people have classes right now and some people have to go to bed because it's late. But um, thank you for being here, of course. So this is the process that I wanna talk about. Analysis is, we're gonna to continue to talk about and continue to define. Um, and uh, Nora, hi, good to have you here. But we are going to, sorry, I have a lot of pages open here. I gotta find the one I'm looking for. We're going to do our own analysis. Um, and this comes from our English 140, which is English for academic purposes, we talked about. Um, it's right here, English for academic purposes. It's the class you're in right now. And we are going to read and analyze a short story. This is a fiction story. I thought it um, appropriate because we're done with winter. It's a story um, about a man and his dog and they seek to build a fire. Um, that's the name of the story, to build a fire. So it's a story that takes place in the Yukon, um, which I'm gonna show you a map. I wanna give you a little back information about the story. Um, the Yukon, not the vehicle, but the actual Yukon. Ah. I should have prepared these maps, sorry. So the Yukon. Um, the Yukon is a Canadian territory. It's the United States and Canada. Um, what they're talking about in the, um, in the story. But I want you to know where it takes place. 
Uh, let me just zoom out. I just need a map here to show you kind of where in the world we're talking about. So here is the United States and Canada. Um, here's where I am in Spokane, Washington, right about here. Uh, and then we have, you know, beautiful British Columbia and then massively huge and beautiful Alaska, United States. So the Yukon is up in here. Um, North, North America is what we're talking about. And up here is largely cold, very, very cold, very snowy. Um, and this is about an older man who um, is up in this very cold territory um, in the winter time where it gets well below zero, freezing where you can like see your breath um, and where if you were to spit, uh, you know, spit saliva, it would freeze before it hit the ground. Very, very cold. So it's a story about him in the winter time up here. He's searching for gold and, um, and I don't want to tell you too much, but you can probably guess from the title, at some point, he tries to build a fire. Um, it's by a man named Jack London. And I always encourage people to do a little research about their authors, whoever wrote um, the book or article that you are reading. Uh, so here's a picture of him. Obviously, he lived a a while ago. He was born in 1876 in San Francisco, California. He's an American author and American novelist and journalist. Um, let's check out his Wikipedia page and learn a little bit about Jack London. So uh, he was born, he was an American novelist and social activist, pioneer uh, in commercial magazine fiction. So he wrote fiction for American magazines. Um, he wrote Call the Wild, White Fang. I remember White Fang was turned into a movie and I watched it as a kid. I loved that movie. Um, it's sad, it's exciting, it's adventurous, it's all those things put together. Um, so he writes about the Klondike and the Yukon um, and about the gold rush. So the gold rush is kind of what he is, it, it's a fuel for the the setting of the story in that um, there was a gold rush, everybody moved west into the United States or in the United States and then west and north um, kind of up in this area where I live and even north of here um, because there was gold, there was wealth just free out there for the taking so a lot of people sought that out. Um, but you can read up a little bit about him and learn about his history, that's helpful. But your homework, so premium subscribers, um, there's exercises attached to this. But for everybody, here is, um, here's a link to the PDF so you can read the book as well. I just put that in the chat. I also have it right here in the notes. Um, so you guys can all read the story. It's great. Um, the intro uh, little excerpt here says, he was quick and alert in the things of life, but only in the things and not in the significances. Um, I will say that this language, because the writer was older, um, I mean, he was born in the 1800s and he died in 1916. So the language, some of it, is older language. There's only one or two words in here that I think might stump you a little bit. And you can feel free to email me or message me and ask me the meaning of them. Um, but, you know, keep a list as you read. And this analysis is going to be based only on this source. So you're going to read this story and then you're going to analyze it. Uh, I'm going to have a couple questions that I'm going to pose. I will send those questions out to the premium subscribers. So if you're not a premium subscriber yet, you can become one and I'll include you on that list. But that's going to be the topic of discussion for next week. If you're not a premium subscriber, still show up in class and you can participate in the discussion. Um, but I want to give our students, a, our premium subscriber students, a chance to think about um, a couple different aspects of this story. So that'll be sent out after class today. But read this. I mean, it's, it's good American fiction. 
Um, it's exciting stuff and it's about nature, which I love hiking in the wilderness, even in the wintertime, which I love. So this is something I can really get behind and, and think about. Um, and it's just a good story. It's a very famous story too. It's a very popular story. It will give you something to talk about if you meet Americans or Canadians. Lots of Canadians have read this story. Um, lots of Americans have read this story. And it's not too terribly long. It is, let's see how many pages we're working with here. Uh, 15 pages. So I'm gonna give you all week. You have all week to read it and uh, ask me questions. You guys can ask each other questions and, uh, and talk about it amongst each other. What do you think? What do you think? Um, but make sure you're forming your own opinions too. Follow this process that we created. Um, take in the new information, think about it, and then form an opinion. Um, and I'm going to guide your opinions by asking you questions. I'm going to ask you prompts to help you form a specific opinion. And then we'll talk about it more. Um, so this is analysis and we're going, I know it's a writing class and we're doing reading, but that is because um, our analysis is going to be written down. We're going to write this eventually um, and you should write it as notes, but this first class, I just want you to think about the process of analysis. So don't worry about writing an essay or anything like that. Please do not do that. But write a few notes based on my prompt that I send out. Um, and make notes as you read about your opinion so that you can answer some questions next class. We're gonna chat about it, okay? I gotta be careful of the time here. Looks like we're just about out of time, but you guys are wonderful. I'm gonna share this with all the premium subscribers. If you're not a premium subscriber, remember you can become one. Um, just go to this website and check it out. Also, um, be sure to befriend uh, me and my college on Facebook. Um, we're awesome and we'd love to chat with you. So there's mine and go ahead and like our college too. That's awesome. And you can join our um, face, Learn English on Facebook page as well. So that is the story. That is the homework. Uh, premium subscribers, you'll be getting an email in the next hour uh, with a couple prompts and um, our notes and everything kind of put together for you. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. I'm gonna go ahead and make the screen boom big now so I can say goodbye properly to everybody. Thank you so much for class, um, or for being in class today. Thank you for being here. You guys are amazing students. A couple people, it was your first time. Khalid Mohammed, I remember it was your first time. Anybody else that was here for the first time, thank you and welcome. We're a great place to hang out. We're a great group of students um, from all over the world and really happy that you're here. Um, for some of you, it's 2.30 in the morning on Friday. For me right now, it's 8.30 in the morning on a Thursday. Um, so it's really cool that we can all have, uh, um, we can all have this experience together and, and meet together. So, I will, uh, I will see everybody next week, and I'll, I'll talk to you then. So as always, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Hi everyone, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. Also, if you want the full experience of being a student in a smart live class with things like homework, and teacher feedback, follow the link and become a premium subscriber. Also, if you want to see more videos from this class, check out our playlist.